Uh, he the shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin, mega powers, I'm savage and peep the babbling. Got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping him. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. It's pod time. time. <laughs> we're about to pod. I'm the, the the white potter. I guess we're all white here, unfortunately. Uh, Scott, what was the episode about? Just... You know, it's like working with a bunch of people from fucking Target. <laughs> Don't put that on us, dude. I bet you guys used real glass earlier today, too, didn't you? Sure Cry me a fucking these river. Two, these two dumb guys right here think they're in Reseda. <laughs> Well, guys, today's topic is going to be about the uh, much-talked-about controversial footage AEW dropped on us last night between the backstage altercation between Jungle Boy, CM Punk, and I'm going to hold what I've got to say. I want to hear what you guys have to say first. You guys are honestly, in- Scott. Right, I think you're on, gonna be surprised. Go I think you have a long thing. No, no, no. I'm just telling Scott. I think you're gonna be surprised. I think we all three have different opinions, legitimately. I think because I've talked a little bit to Chase about it, and we don't necessarily agree. Not yeah. that we disagree, but go ahead, Chase. Okay, so, um, like Michael just prefaced, we've been talking about this since last night. We talked about it on the live stream we did. We talked about it all day while I was at work, texting back and forth. We talked about it with Scott. Um, I saw both of their points of view and I'm really like, I'm kind of in the middle here. Like I, and that's not because I'm trying to keep this like neutral or whatever, but like, I think it's a, so it's a bad look for AEW because Michael just sent me a thing. They had 800,000 viewers last night. It was the most since February. And I told him that a lot of non diehard AEW people probably tuned in to see the punk stuff. And then immediately left, which whatever it is, what it is. I don't think it's a good look for AEW because you're showcasing one of the top guys from WWE on your program and giving him no matter what amount of time it was. It could have been 30 seconds. It could have been five minutes, whatever there you're showcasing him. Secondly, I think it is in poor judgment on WWE's part because they spent all week shitting on AEW every chance they got on the Pat McAfee show on all the rumble pressers, the pre-shows, the post-shows, whatever they had, commentary, they were just shitting all over AEW. So, like, if AEW really isn't, and I said this to Michael, if AEW isn't competition in WWE's eyes, stop taking cheap pot shots at them because it's not helping anybody. Well, hold hold on here. AEW has taken many more shots. AEW takes their shots, and it is what it is, but, like, I feel like the companies make fans more tribalistic than the fans make themselves tribalistic because in WWE's eyes, you need to view our product as the top number one. Nobody else competes. We are wrestling, which we all know they're not on AEW's part. They just want to produce the best wrestling show possible. They don't, they don't care if people are watching or not. Obviously they want to, but like, Obviously, Tony doesn't care that the numbers on Collision are falling. He's still going to keep putting on Collision. Um, But, yeah, I'm just like, I think it's a bad look for both companies. I'm going to try to be as Swiss as I can about this. Um, Cesaro. My inner Cesaro. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's a bad look for everybody. Everybody involved. Nobody comes out looking like a hero here. So, that's actually, you actually said something pretty... uh profound almost i didn't i've never necessarily thought about that because i'm on the side of i don't if so i don't care who's taking shots i just don't want there to be the um people being hip, hypocrites about it you know what i mean wb can take shots aw can take shots that's what the game has been since the 80s you know what i mean 70s it's not a big deal it's when people take it too far right but i but almost i didn't even think about it because 
people are going to take it too seriously when they take the shots and they're like, that's when that you might be right on that about the tribalism. Um, I don't care. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't understand the think pieces on it. No one was making think pieces about WWE saying what they were saying. No one was like, why is WWE spending WrestleMania weekend talking about it? No one said shit. No one was like, why is CM Punk bringing this up? Why is Ariel Hawani talking? No one said that shit, but it's like every time AEW does something and retort, right? Cause you're right, Scott. They have made shots before, but every shot that was made on Dynamite was a retort to something that WWE had said. It's like being in the classroom, right? And someone behind you keeps kicking the back of your desk. And you go to turn around like, hey, fucking stop kicking the back of my desk. And the teacher's like, what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like AEW is always getting that reaction. They can never do anything, right? They're never allowed to be the littler person. It's all There's always room for WWE to talk shit. Talk like for we're not. This isn't even the topic of the video, but it happened in the same episode. Will Osprey brought up Triple H because Triple H brought up Will Osprey, and the amount of people going, "Why is why is Will Osprey doing this, bro?" He didn't start it. No one. Like, he's just responding, Fair. and it's fine. Like I think the shots are okay. I just like like brother said. I think the tribalism in wrestling nowadays. Brother's gone. The tribalism and wrestling nowadays is honestly the most is the part I enjoy the least. And it's just like AW felt away. They did something about it. Um, because of that, Jungle Boy had one of the highest selling shirts, right? Which is insane because that's Jungle Boy. And something that people have said about Jungle Boy is that he can't move March. He's not a he's not a needle mover. And because of this, because the the the, the swing side of that is people going, Oh, it's all about punk. People are more concerned with punk now. He he's a top selling merch mover because of this now. And he was the one that got abused, right? Um and that's the la the last part I want to talk about. It. I want to get, let you get your stuff off. Is the people being like, "Oh, it was nothing, fam." If you go into your job and front headlock a guy and then punch him and then lunge at your boss, you're fired. It doesn't matter what you say because it's twenty. This isn't the eighties and nineties where it's like you need to handle stuff like men. No, if you fucking hit someone that didn't physically. Uh, you know, assault you first, you're going to get in trouble and you're going to be fired. And on top of that, that wasn't the first time that's happened with Punk. And that was the reason they played it, right, is because Punk in the interview was like, well, Jungle Boy approached me. And immediately you saw that's not what happened, right? But like I said in our group chat, it never mattered what the video was going to show because people ha are staunchly, the, the the divide lines are there and people are on the other side. It didn't matter what they were going to show, right? And so that that's all. I'm cool with the shots. I just don't like that when one side does it, there's this loud majority of people going, that's so unprofessional. They need to worry about this, this, and this. But when WWE does it, no one says anything. That's that's my only thing. I think the footage is fine. It, it got him a top selling shirt with Jungle Boy. Um, I just sent it to him. They had their best uh, rating on a show since February. So even if it's temporary, I mean, that's what you take the risk for, right? Is bringing in temporary viewers and hopefully they see something to stay for. But that's my take on it. Well, a few things. Uh, one, the comments made by Will Ospreay did not come from him. He was told to say that by Sean Ross Sapp already disproved that. He already dropped an article on it. He that was his promo. So there's and a lot it of was the, the it was yeah Sean Ross Sapp already the uh, it was and the wrestle purists I think they were the original one to tweet it they've already deleted it. So the, that was the report that I had heard was that came from Tony Khan not Will Offspray, but re regardless, you're kind of saying the same shit that's been said for the past two decades about Triple H. You're not really breaking any new ground by what you're saying. That's not going to change anything, but the, the, the topic is the video. And I think AEW comes out looking worse in the end doing this video than if they just would have left it alone. Because how, does, again, how do they look worse, though? That's, that's what I'm failing to understand. Well, hold on here. There are three sides to every story. Your side, my side, and what actually took place. Because both sides are going to say something to better the other uh, view. So with the video, we still don't have the full story from that thing. There was no audio. I am not defending the actions of one CM Punk. But what I am saying is if in the work environment, specifically in professional wrestling, if you come at a veteran a certain type of way, 
and whatever you say can be construed as a threat or disrespectful, that's possibly one of the outcomes that's going to happen to you. Yeah, but also it, in wrestling, they used to one? shit no. in bags. Like, I, again, I, that's an old school thing. That's why I'm trying. That's why I said it's 2024. We have to get past those old Moser thing because that's just not how the world works anymore. And it was on camera, right? Which you know, depending on how you feel about it, thank God or thank not. Well, and my my thing is again, I'm not defending the actions of CM Punk. What I am saying is not hearing the audio. We only really have half of a story from that show. We don't know what was said. We have other people saying what was said, but we haven't heard specifically what was said. As far as the video, you had people in your crowd chanting for CM Punk, a guy that is not. But but they were also booed. I I know that part was that's getting left out a lot. They got booed immediately by like the majority of the crowd. Yeah, that happened pretty immediately. I I am saying like the thing with Punk. You don't really get a good view of him lunging at Tony. Like you, you could somewhat make out that that might have been Tony Khan, but it wasn't definitively like a clear shot that it was Tony. So, look, I, you're, it's your company. You can feel however you want. If that made you fear for your life, bro, you would never be able to employ Brock Lesnar. Bro, he's not a wrestler. He's yeah. he's a billionaire kid who grew up playing with action figures. Yeah. I'm I'm almost a thousand percent that he has every right to feel threatened in that situation. Would I, I would have felt threatened in that situation for I sure? I can't say that I wouldn't. But Tony Khan, you think he's getting in bar fights every week as a billionaire? He's never around violence, especially so, like, with it being somebody who has literally in like everybody saw him punk trained in combat sports, so he could really fuck somebody up if he wanted to. Like I don't know that. There's I mean, a lot of take people down that, Jungle Boy, but yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people that probably would have felt somewhat threatened in that situation. Continue. Yeah. Though, sorry. We keep we keep like <laughs> Michael keeps bombarding, and I just did it too. <coughs> I'm trying to let you explain. Yeah, go ahead. Honestly, after watching the video, I don't think it helps AEW at all. I don't think they look but here's better. the thing. I don't think it hurts them either. I think it's very, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I don't think it means anything. I think they're going to get the same rating they got next week is the same reading, rating they got last week. I don't think it's going to change anything. I don't think anyone who was a diehard AEW fan is going, fuck this, I'm out. I don't think it changes anything. It was just something they did almost to pop the people who we were on the other side that already thought fuck CM Punk, right? Because if, or if you don't care, right? Because if you watch the build up to it, right? The promo that the Bucks cut before was funny, right? Saying that that's the reason they lost the match because they couldn't pray because it was right before the FTR match. Which again, I, I understand, but if it's not going to do anything for you, why would you go back to this? Why why would you why didn't Punk this? not talk about it when he got asked about it? It's been just we as long as Punk has it. No, I'm saying he got asked live on an interview with Eric Hawani, and he wasn't like, oh, it's been months. I don't want to talk about it. He talked about it. So why can't AEW talk about it? Why can't because they? The and they also are doing the thing that they got harassed for when it first happened. They said, why don't, why, if they would just turn this into a storyline, it could do da 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 da. Then they do it, and the people go, no, fuck that. Not like that. How dare you? We met differently. Like they're doing, what are they, I just don't understand what they're doing wrong or what they're doing that's going to negatively affect their bottom line when they, they still have a TV deal coming up and they're still going to probably sign for more, regardless of what tickets they're selling at house shows because. Every week, they're still the number one programming on the channel they're on. So they're going to be fine. So how do that, they, how are they hurt? The problem with this is you're going against essentially now WWE with this because that's who CM Punk's employer is. And they the have people who pulled it off YouTube, sorry, just one more point. The people who pulled it off YouTube was WBD so that people would watch it on TV. <laughs> it wasn't WB. It was WBD so they could get the ratings that they actually did get anyways. But they're doing that so people won't watch it online and then they'll have to force them, you know, get the numbers through the boxes and stuff. Sorry. No, my, my thing is with it involving WWE who is employing CM Punk, their media outreach is probably triple that of what AEW's is. 
they're going to be able to spin the narrative however they see fit regardless of whatever footage aew has it's the perception of the two companies and is it bullshit yes it's a hundred percent bullshit but aew was th this is the thing that i don't understand tony had to know this was not going to be well received all around like the the comments that were said and i don't think tony is a stupid person i don't i think he gets a lot of flack for maybe some questionable decisions but i unless this is going to end up with a major storyline for jack perry what what are you what are you gaining from this? Why why go through the, the hassle? I what, think it's what a, what hassle because I don't think it changed the mind. Like I said before, this didn't change anyone's minds that's been anti AEW. This didn't change anyone's minds that's been pro AEW. This didn't do anything. It's such a neutral thing that happened. The people that already dislike AEW still dislike them. The people that were already on the side of AEW were still like, okay, it's whatever. They're either like, it's nothing, or what was the point? Like, the side you're taking. But no one's, it's not, they're not losing anything. And I do think this will lead into a storyline with Jack Perry, because the Young Bucks came out with the scapegoat shirt on last night. They shouted um, him out two weeks ago. They said, I, I would be weird love if they did He's that's the, the number other one shirt seller overnight. Number one merch mover. Jack Needle Perry, who mover. we... Who Hashtag we thought Jack was Perry needle mover. The least important of the four pillars of AEW. <laughs> it's turning insane. out to be the second most important behind Darby right now. I, I just, I, I just, don't know. I, it's hard I, it, to it's just like, go ahead, sorry. It's hard to formulate an opinion on this without hearing the audio of that video. And I said that last night on the live. I said to Michael, I, it's on tape. You can go back and look at it. I said that because he immediately was like, oh, that's all punk. And I was like, fair. He started the physical, but like, we can't hear verbally what is being said between okay. them to, to cause him to do that. I'm not, once again, I'm just, I, no, I, know I also, I, I, I also think that there should be audio to it. But my thing that is, might, is might right? be a legal thing. That might be a legal reason. Like we couldn't well, get if you audience. look at if you look at the camera, that's not a type of camera that's going to have audio. I think that was strictly for visual purposes, just to make sure everything was going smooth backstage. That's just not the type of camera that's ever going to have audio. Um, but regard, so even if you're on the side of like, hey, it doesn't matter what you say, you can still get punched in the mouth at any moment. If you're from that archaic mode of thinking, that's fine. You're about to have a match on the biggest fucking card AEW had to have, and you're like, let me go settle a beef right now. Punk walked up and said, I'm going to settle a beef right now. Jack Perry could have said whatever the fuck he wants. Punk, you still have a match that's about to go on. You're lucky they broke it up because it could have gotten worse and you could have got injured before the match even happened. Like that, like I don't understand. Like, I just don't understand that point. Like, what did he say? Why handle it before your match? Like, what the fuck? What does that prove? Like, wait, wait till later. This is the same problem that we had with all uh, Brawl Out or whatever it was. You are taking the time of the company of one of their biggest pay per views. They just want to did one of their biggest buy rates to handle a beef. Punk, you need to get your shit together and get on some fucking medication. This isn't the time. I'm all for, hey, if you want to throw hands to solve problems, that's cool. Don't do it on company time when we're li when literally doing so fucks up the company's image. If you think that them showing this footage caused more harm than Punk actually doing what he did, that's insanity because think of the fucking outpour that came out after it was reported that happened. A bunch of people went, fuck AEW. They're letting shit like this happen. Da, 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 all because Punk couldn't control himself. This footage isn't going to change anything. Them airing the footage isn't going to change a thing for AEW, outside of people still standing where their division lines are, Punk be like, and that's and I I apologize to Punk. I think he's having a great run in WWE. He seems like he's actually starting to love wrestling as opposed to that weird promo he cut when he first got back. Like this is home. It's like all right, but I I, I enjoy where he's at now. But that shit was bullshit, and it's so weird we keep giving him these excuses like, we don't know what Jungle Boy's at. Like, bro, that's just not how you handle that. Not right there. Not like that. This isn't the 80s. There's billions of dollars on the line as opposed to thousands. You need to keep that shit together. That's my point. I My understanding was Punk was asked to go speak to Jungle Boy about the situation. 
reports are it was Tony Khan that had asked him to go speak to Jungle Boy. Issue with that being CM Punk does not own the company. Granted, he's a, a vet, he's a locker room leader, but if the boss, if Tony Khan tells you not to do something, then you should not do it. I, again, I'm not a Vince supporter, but that shit would not have flown under Vince McMahon. And it sure as hell wouldn't have flew under Triple H. Right. I don't know. Like, again, I really want to hear that audio one day, that unedited audio to hear what was said. What could and he what, have said that that provoked that, you think? Like, what's a good reason to get choked out? Like, what's a real good reason? Something, something personal about his wife or... If he said, if Jungle Boy said what Punk said he said on uh, Heelwani's podcast, um, <laughs> uh, according to one Bill Phil. Who lied, but go ahead. Who has yeah. lied. I'm not saying he lied about this, but he did lie about part of it. But has lied in the past. Um, he said that Jungle Boy said after Punk asked, why do you want to do this shit? Jungle Boy said, if you have a problem, do something. So that in somebody like Punk's mind could be... A psychopath. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's right, but I'm saying that something in somebody's mind like his could be construed as, I have to choke you out now. Cause that's just that, like Michael said, that's like, that's the era he comes from. That's the era he was still trained in. So like, that's, that's what he was taught by the people who taught him how to wrestle. So like, if, if jungle boy said something to rile him up more than what it was initially going to be shame on jungle boy. If he didn't say anything as passive aggressive as punk is leading on, Shame on punk. But, but okay, let's say let's the, say hold he, on. The whole thing shouldn't have fucking happened. Because at collision, when Tony Schiavone and all the producers and everybody told Jungle Boy no real glass, and they asked Punk to go talk to him if Tony Khan would have just said, Hey, Jack, we're not doing real glass, fucking deal with it. I'm the boss, you're the employee. You're going to do what I tell you to do. If Tony would have just put his money where his fucking nuts are, he would have handled it right then and right there. So, like, there were things that didn't get done that should have been done to de-escalate before it needed to escalate to that point. Everybody involved in this is in the wrong. Punk, Perry, and Tony Khan, all three of them, they're all in the wrong on this. I don't think people should look at this like AEW trying to do this or WWE trying to do this. You're looking at three people, and it's those three people I just named. I guess the, the question is, like, what happens next for AEW? Like, does they probably you, put on like a really good pay per view next Sunday? Uh, I'm going to Indy to watch them next Wednesday. Uh, they announced uh, shout Will out Ospreay Keaton versus, uh, versus Antonio Cesaro, which is going to be fire. I honestly versus don't think who? they go. Uh, uh, fuck, what is his name now? Claudio Castagnoli. Cannoli, yeah. Um, I don't think Claudio they're going to bring Cannoli. it up again. I think it was just a thing like, hey, you're sending shots. We're going to do this thing. And that was it. And that's all it's going to be. I think they're going to move. I don't What's the, I don't think they're going to go back to it. Did Sean Ross <coughs> also dispute that the Bucks didn't want to air that footage? That was all the Bucks idea, yeah. So okay, that, was, okay. that was the two things he came out. He said Osprey okay. wanted to cut that promo. He had been working on it all day. And also that, the, that was the Bucks and Khan's idea. Okay. And it was going to happen earlier, but then they didn't want to do it. And then WWE said something, but it's not WWE's fault. They're allowed to say what they want, but AEW can't do anything they want. So that's what happened. Makes sense. Adds up. Yeah, well, you, you already know. know, next time CM Punk has a microphone in his hand on Raw. I just hope Drew says something about it. I don't care what Punk says about it. Let me know what Drew's going to say, because he's going to drop a million the numbers, dollars. The numbers don't lie here, and they're spelling disaster for Phil Brooks. <laughs> If WWE wanted to like really counter program this, they should do a segment in Gorilla with Drew and Punk and recreate the whole scene. That's what they should do. And the let's other make thing it is, entertaining. Did you, did you see Grayson Waller and Austin Theory's tweets? Yeah. Yeah. I saw Sean Spears made a tweet. It was like a ball bouncing back, hitting him in the face, and everyone was like, What have you done in your career? <laughs> 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 it's just savage. So. Uh 
procreated twice with Peyton Royce. I'll give him that. <clears throat> That's true. Well, Andy bashed know. Cody over the head. On accident. <laughs> What's the plan? Well, again, we'll we'll see what happens going forward. Um, I don't know. In the comments, let us know what you guys think of the the footage. Were you for it, against it? Did it change your perception on anything or anybody after seeing it? Let us know in the comments. And again, guys, if you have not, please smash that like button and subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot here. And we will be seeing you guys later on this week when we do some more live streaming. Everybody, keep an eye out for that. So for Chase, Mike, and myself, everybody out there, stay heated, and we'll see how.